display in Moscow, the wreckage of pilot Francis Powers' U-2 reconnaissance plane for Moscovites and foreign newsmen to see as the Soviet launches its most belligerent anti-American propaganda barrage in recent years. The spy plane incident on the eve of the summit was seized upon by the Kremlin and blown up to proportions that startled and shocked the outside world. Khrushchev himself at the Moscow press conference loosed a furious tirade, charging America with deliberate aggression and threatening to attack any allied bases from which U-2 jets flew over Russia. Folks for the success of the summit talks even then grew faint. It was clear at the time that Mr. K was laying groundwork for a clash in which the actual issue would be his demands on West Berlin. Pessimism was in the air as Khrushchev arrived in Paris. On arrival, he denounced certain influential circles, in his words, who were preventing the improvement of the international climate. It was clear that the emotional Russian premier was in an ugly mood. President Eisenhower arrived, amply forewarned by Mr. K's bellicose pronouncements and prepared for heavy going. Ike was unsmiling, and in his airport address, troubled but not without hope. The hopes of humanity call on the four of us to purge our minds of prejudice and our hearts of rancor. Far too much is at stake to indulge in profitless bigot bickering. Then, Khrushchev deliberately torpedoed the first meeting with an insulting tirade directed at President Eisenhower personally. He withdrew his invitation to the President to visit the Soviet Union and demanded a public apology for the U-2 spy flights. Ike disclosed future U-2 flights had been cancelled, but the summit talks seemed on the verge of collapse. In a few brief hours, Khrushchev had brought Soviet-American relations to their lowest point since Stalin at his worst. This passenger vessel lies on the waves, awaiting her christening. 1,035 feet in length, a $60 million craft will carry 2,000 passengers in air-conditioned splendor. The luxury liner is hailed by President de Gaulle as one of the great successes of French technique. Then the vessel, which it is hoped will bring renewed eminence to the French merchant marine, is christened by Madame de Gaulle with the proud name SS France. on the North Atlantic Blue Ribbon Run, arena of maritime prestige.